Your body is amazing, but sometimes it needs fixing. All over the UK, there are special teams of professionals trained to tackle medical mysteries. And some of their work is life-changing. Today, I'm meeting 10-year-old Ben, who has epilepsy. Your brain is incredible. It tells your body what to do by sending electrical messages through your nerves to your muscles. Whether you're walking, blinking or picking your nose, it's these messages from the brain that control movement. But sometimes too many uncontrolled messages come from the brain to the body, creating a storm of electrical activity. And when this happens, it's called an epileptic seizure. Epilepsy is a condition that affects 60,000 children in the UK. So you might have it, or you might have a friend who does. Ben has been having seizures for nearly five months. Morning. As well as medicine, in a small number of cases, doctors can use surgery to treat epilepsy. And that's why Ben has come to Bristol Children's Hospital. So you have these seizures, now how often do you have them? Uh, two times a day sometimes. And what happens when you have a seizure, do you know? I don't know. Not sure? And why don't you know? Because you're not conscious when you have them, are you? Yeah. You don't remember them at all? No. So today is a really big day for you. Yeah. Why is it a big day? Because I'm operation. You're going to have an operation today? Yeah. Ben's incredible surgery involves removing a small part of the brain, which doctors believe is causing his seizures. Ben has had MRI scans and electrodes fitted to his head to pinpoint the exact area to remove. Dr Mike Carter is carrying out today's operation. We learned that there are electrical activities coming from one particular part of the brain, and that area of the brain is the area that contains the abnormality we can see on the scan. So he's going to have an operation to remove this abnormality and hopefully cure his seizures. It's time for Ben's operation. He's had a general anaesthetic to put him to sleep so he won't feel a thing. So this black bit here, in this bit of Ben's brain, this is where those seizures are starting. And this is what Mike is going to take out today. Firstly, Ben gets a snazzy haircut in the place where the incision will be made. Then Dr Mike cuts through Ben's skin and muscle to expose the skull. Look away now if you're squeamish. So this is the bone. We're going to mark out where we're going to make some openings into it. What Mike's doing is opening a hatch. He calls it actually a trap door in the side of Ben's skull. And underneath, we're going to get to the brain. There you go. It's a bit of bone that's come out. OK, so we'll keep that, put it back in later. Another gross alert coming up. So this is the surface of Ben's brain. And about two centimetres under here is that abnormality of the blood vessels the mic is going to remove. To make sure Dr Mike gets to exactly the right part, he uses an amazing piece of technology called neuro-navigation, which guides him to precisely where the lesion is. Dr Mike begins to cut into Ben's brain. I'm just beginning to see a difference in the colour of the tissue down here. I think that's the abnormality. That's certainly where the image guidance is telling us we need to be. So the, the red, angry-looking blob is the abnormality where we think the epilepsy is coming from. But, um, there you go. Have a look at it. Wow. So this is the lesion that Mike thinks has been causing Ben's epilepsy. And he's really hoping that now that he's taken that out, the seizures will stop. Ouch. Your body is amazing, but sometimes it needs fixing. All over the country, there are special teams of professionals trained to tackle medical mysteries, and not all of them are human. Dogs have 200 million smell receptors, making them really superior sniffers. And dogs' noses don't get much better than Shirley's here, because Shirley's nose is a bit of a lifesaver. Shirley's nose has been trained to help Rebecca. Rebecca has type 1 diabetes. This means that her body doesn't produce a chemical called insulin. And amazingly, Shirley's incredible nose can sniff out when there are problems. Insulin's job is to make sure you have just the right amount of sugar in your blood. When your body doesn't produce insulin, blood sugar gets out of control. So if your blood sugar is too high, you inject insulin. And if it's too low, you have to eat something sweet. How many times a day do you have to take insulin? Four times, one for breakfast, one for lunch, dinner and night time. But Rebecca's blood sugar varies depending on what she's up to and Shirley can spot it. This is something that humans could never do. She's able to detect changes in Rebecca's breath 
as soon as they happen. And usually that's before Rebecca has even the slightest idea that anything's wrong. So this is definitely a dog that thinks there's something going on. Yeah. When Shirley smells a problem, she licks Rebecca and her blood can be tested. 3.8. Then she can inject more insulin or get help before things get dangerous. What would have happened before you had Shirley? I would have had the ambulance once or twice a week. So since you've had Shirley, how many times have you had an ambulance? Um, like once in three years. Shirley's on call for Rebecca 24-7, checking on her right through the night. Rebecca leaves for school in the morning while Shirley catches up on some sleep, but she soon wakes up for duty. Do you actually feel happier that Rebecca's safer when Shirley's around? Yeah, very. Shirley's always on the sniff. <laughs> <laughs> and Shirley's sniffing keeps Rebecca safe. Shirley has completely changed Rebecca's life because although Rebecca will always have type 1 diabetes, now, thanks to Shirley's super sensitive sniffer, rather than calling all those ambulances, all she gets is lots of big wet doggy kisses. Yum. Ouch. Let's go back to accident and emergency to meet our next patient. And you're not going to believe this one. In Liverpool Accident and Emergency, six-year-old Gracie has arrived with her mum and a big bandage on her finger. I've got a slipped finger. A slipped finger? It is bleeding a lot. Ah, oh, a slit finger. Sounds like a nasty cut. I think the doctor's going to make it all better. That's right. But how did the ghastly gash happen? Well, Chris, once upon a time, in a faraway land... Uh, Liverpool's aunt. Gracie's from Liverpool. Go with it, Chris. We're in the fairy tale land of Liverpool. Um, righto. Princess Gracie was in her castle admiring her mother's jewels. Hang on, who's that? A fairy, obviously. And she's flown off with a diamond earring. Uh, okay. And Gracie was trying to get it back when all of a sudden the earring flew under the roaring. Zand, that's an electric fire. Oh, all right, fine. But as she tried to retrieve the earring, her hand got stuck. Uh-oh. And when she pulled it out, her finger sliced open. Ouch. There's a bit of a cue in accident and emergency. So, while we're waiting, why don't you tell us something about yourself, Gracie? I've never been to A&E before. Never been to A&E before? Well done. I've got Kia's ears. <laughs> she likes her bling. These are my plaques. They'd suit you, Zand. Oh, thank you. That's enough about you, Gracie. Time for nurse practitioner Julia Maxted to sort that cut out. Can you just bend your finger, the end, little end bit, lovely, and straighten it again? First things first, Nurse Julia needs to figure out if Gracie's cut is so deep it's damaged the insides. Oh, you're very brave. We do that to just check that the ligaments are all working. A ligament is the tissue that joins a bone to a bone. Can you feel me touching there and there? Good girl. That's quite a cut you've got there, Gracie. Yes. But the nurse is happy there's no internal damage done, so she can clean that cut and make sure there's no dirt lurking deep inside. Squeeze my hand as hard as she can. <gasps> Whoa, she's strong. 